Okay, so I made this video to kind of show you how to prepare a proposal with our PDF version. So first thing we're going to do is open up the PDF. And most of the fields you'll just be able to click and type in. I'm just going to use my information for demonstration purposes. Select the date. Put in the address. You want to make sure you get a phone number. And definitely an email address. Okay, so once you got that information in, next step would be to input the type of product. So be specific. So this one is going to be a PVC fence. The style is going to be privacy. It's the most common. Wouldn't hurt to put in the orientation as well. Vertical versus horizontal. Type in the height. Here we're going to put in the overall footage of the job, uh, including all gates. Uh, and then here, um, here we'll just put in the amount of gates that we're getting. So let's say there's two. Picket spacing. Uh, even though we know there isn't any on a privacy fence, we still want to be specific. Color, white. Uh, on this particular fence, there's two rails. Uh, post size, again, specify. PVC is 5 inch. And the picket size is a 1 by 6 inch. And then on the left side, if there's removal of old fence, this is where it would go doesn't really matter for pricing what kind of fence is coming out but it's nice to have a heads up for the crew uh, so they know kind of what they're dealing with woods a little bit harder to deal with than say chain link or aluminum um, the gate details this is something you need to talk with the homeowner about while you're on site but which way are they swinging if they have a pool they have to swing out so there's really no, no negotiating that uh, under latch um, here we also need to be pretty specific um, more so on the color uh, the PVC latches we use are just the standard stainless steel so you can write standard here um, hinge you, you can just type in pool code regardless um, and then be specific on the color and make sure that's something you discussed with the homeowner white is kind of the default most popular uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. If there's core drills, we should know about that ahead of time. Or if it's going to asphalt, I wouldn't worry too much about stock product or custom order. Uh, we need to know if it's a pool barrier. Uh, we need to know if we're permitting. And also, uh, if there was clearing involved, um, we need to know that as well. And most of the times there are. Uh, so then next would be to draw the diagram of the layout. So if you go up here to your tools, select the rectangle. This would be for the house. Um, always uh, the front would be here. This would be the rear. Um, and then next would be the actual fence line. So I go down to connected connected lines and uh, start drawing out my fence line depending on the layout and I just need a couple individual lines oops that is not the right color or the size, but we can fix that. There we go. And same thing over here.
So then we need to put in the actual measurements that we took while we're out there. So then you would go up here to your text tool. And let's say this was 75 feet. This, this side was 50 feet. Oops. This side was 50 feet. And then here, um, it's best to put in the actual measurements between the gates instead of a total, um, just in case they wanted the gate somewhere specific. So let's say this was five feet, then a gate, and then another five feet. Um, and then over here it was four feet, a gate, and then say six feet. Uh, and then below that, you can write in uh, the gate size. Okay, and then the last thing is um, we need to know setbacks on everything. So, there we go. We need to know the setbacks from this measurement to where the fence starts. You could either do it from the front of the house or you can start on the back of the house and go this way. But we need to know one of these two measurements. That way the guys know when they go out there where to start the fence. If it's not obviously on the corner, the front or the back. If it's somewhere in between, we need to know one of these two measurements. So what I do here is uh, take the text box again, right? And let's say it's a, a 20 foot setback, type 20 feet. Oops, way too big. You get used to all the settings. And then I would move that here, and that's basically telling us that it's the fence starts 20 feet from the front of the house. And then do the same thing on the other side. Uh, let's say this one is 15 feet. Okay, put that there so now we know that this side starts 15 from the front of the house <clears throat> so that's your pretty typical drawing uh, oh if there's a pool we want to indicate that somehow on the drawing as well simple circle will do or you can just type pool in or future pool whichever the case may be but uh, something signifying that there is a pool so we know that it needs a pool barrier permit. If there's any other notes, this is, you could type it in here. Um, homeowner to clear. Oh, I love Aviva. Look at that sock. Fence line. You mean like Walmart. Prior to installation. Um, the other thing is you need to select one of these three options. Uh, but with having a pool, we're kind of limited to uh, slightly uneven grade. Uh, we'll follow the grade. Now we could we could do straight across the top, but we can't have gaps any more any bigger than four inches at the bottom. So if there is grade change, they will have to fill in these gaps before it'll pass code. Make sure you have that conversation with them. Uh, otherwise, we'll just follow the grade, but the top won't be even. And then lastly, you want to put in your price, whatever that may be. And the date, and usually we hold them for 30 days. And then save it to your quote folders, wherever that may be, so you can email it to them and that's it that's kind of kind of what it needs to look like um, if there's any obstacles in the way that you're aware of a tree you should draw that call that out um, if there's pavers we, we need to know that kind of stuff as well just whatever job details uh, that way it's not a surprise the day of installation and then also pictures if there's something out of the ordinary it's not a very clean install or um, there's something the crews need to be aware of. Pictures always help as well. Load those into Zoho. 
That way we can take a look at them before we send the crew out. And that is how you type a proposal. Next would go to Zoho, pull up the customer. Um, I'll just show you how to do it. So next we would go to, uh, let's see. Go to Zoho. Go to the magnifying glass, type in the, the contact you just made the quote for. And then from here, you just want to hit send email. It's going to bring, bring up the uh, email server. Proposal. I just say something like, hello, Christian. Really nice meeting the other day. Whatever you want to word, however you want to word it, I don't care. I have attached the proposal. We discussed. Let me know if you have any questions, Christian. And if you do this through Zoho, there's there's a benefit, and I'll show you here in a second what that is. Um, but we want to attach a file, so we'll go down to here, desktop, go to where your quotes are, you know, oops, wrong one. This first one, it's going to load, once it's loaded, hit send. And off it goes. Now the nice thing here is once you've done that you can scroll down in Zoho under the customer file and you'll see your email that was just sent. And from there you can click on it and, and that proposal will, will be listed down here. What you want to do is hit add attachments to related list. And what that does is uh, it cop makes a copy of it and puts it in attachments right here. So whenever we go to install it, um, we can always pull this up and we have a digital copy of your proposal as well. So there's no room for error and that's it.